Hey, good morning and welcome to Middle School Digital Shorts. My name is Chris and I'm here to introduce us to our new series entitled The Big Picture. How many of you heard the phrase bigger picture? Have you ever thought about what exactly that means? Well, usually people say the phrase bigger picture when there's more to the story than we can actually see. And sometimes in our lives, it can be hard to see the bigger picture. Take, um, I don't know, social media, for example. Maybe you follow a celebrity or an influencer, a YouTuber, or even just someone really popular at your school. From the pictures that pop up on their feed or stories, you think that their life is absolutely perfect. Their hair, I don't know, it always looks amazing. They have a ton of friends and they're making lots of money and things couldn't be going better, right? Or, I don't know, take me for example. Right now, you might notice just how good this place might look. I mean, you got some of my records up there, record player, one of my favorite pieces of artwork. The furniture looks great. It all flows. It's feng shui. I love it. Everything looks like it's being used and it's clean. It's not overly tidy, but it's almost as if I live here. But the truth is this. I actually set this space up, I don't know, like three hours before shooting the digital shorts and you're just seeing what I want you to see. Behind the scenes, it actually becomes apparent that there's a lot of work and a lot of mess that goes into making what you see what I really want you to see. If you can see the bigger picture, you can see just how unorganized a lot of this space is and it's kind of messy it's not so picture perfect when you can see everything, right? You see, when it comes to so many things in our lives, we actually have a tendency to focus only on one small part of what's happening. We don't always pay attention to what's going on behind the scenes. We tend to look at just one circumstance or one event or one detail that, and, and, and think about I guess the way that it's impacting us right now. But when we do that, we miss out on everything else that's actually happening around us. There's actually so much more that we may not yet see. And we're missing actually the big picture. Now, I think this happens in a lot of areas in our lives, but the one that we're going to talk about today is our families. I know all of our families may be different from each other, but I think no matter what, we can all agree on this. When it comes to our families, we tend to think we're the main character in the story. Whether we realize it or not, I think a lot of us expect that. At least in our families, we should revolve, well, I guess the world should revolve around us, right? While we may not do it intentionally, our actions say, hey, I'm the one who should get all the attention. I should be the one in the center of the universe. I mean, think about it. We'd rather have everyone else get on our schedule of staying up and late or, I don't know, sleeping in. I mean, we'd love it if our family meals could only be the things that we like to eat meaning fewer vegetables, more flaming hot Cheetos and pizza. Woo-hoo! We don't think twice about asking our parents to spend money on things like Fortnite or, I don't know, sneakers, concert tickets, because those are the things that we want. Basically, without even realizing it, our actions say to our families that we want them to focus first on how we feel what we need and what they can do to make life look the way that we want it to look. Now, maybe in your family things are a little different. Maybe all the attention actually is focused on you. Your parents are all up in your business. They want to know every detail of your life. Your grades are the most important, your activities are the biggest deal, and your feelings are the top priority of conversation. It's all about what you're doing, how you're feeling, and what you're thinking. And honestly, it's too much. Your family is just uh, blah, blah, driving you crazy, right? With all the questions and conversations and the attention. And listen, I get it. 
it does sound like a lot, but can I just point out one thing? In this case, you two are looking at what's happening in your family in a way that's all about you. You're noticing only how all the attention is impacting you and you're not necessarily thinking about your parents' intentions. You see, whether we're the center of attention or we want all of the attention in our families, we're not seeing the bigger picture. We're not seeing that there may be a lot more happening in our homes, things that we don't know about or understand yet and that's causing our parents or siblings to treat us the way that they do. Or we're not seeing the bigger picture of our own actions. That the way we view ourselves and treat our families has an impact on them too. And here's the deal, missing that bigger picture can actually cause a lot of frustration and hurt within our families. These type of tricky family dynamics actually have been around as as there have been, as long as there have been families, I guess. In fact, some of the craziest stories in the Bible are about this topic. And trust me, some of these stories are crazier than we can actually imagine. And today, we're actually going to look at one guy in the Bible who found himself in the middle of a pretty crazy family situation. His name was Joseph. And he was actually a really big deal in the Old Testament, which is actually a collection of books written before Jesus came to earth. You see, Joseph was one of the youngest sons of a man named Jacob. And Jacob had a lot of old, and, well, not Jacob, Joseph had a lot of older brothers. I don't know, like 10. So we're talking about a pretty big family here. Now, Joseph's family probably looked quite a bit different than the family that we see here because obviously they were real people and not cartoons. And there was like, I don't know, 10 of them. But one thing that's true about all families, both back then and now, is that the relationship in them can be tricky. So that being said, let's take a look at what made some of the relationships in Joseph's family so tricky. Jacob, loved Joseph more than any of his other children because Joseph had been born to him in his old age. So one day Jacob had a special gift made for Joseph, a beautiful robe. But his brothers hated Joseph because their father loved him more than the rest of them. They couldn't say a kind word to him. So basically, Jacob loved Joseph more than all of his other children, and he did nothing to hide it. Jacob could have just said, hey, uh, other sons, I just want to let you know that Joseph over here, he's the best. He is my favorite. And I don't know about you, but if I were one of Joseph's brothers, I'd be super jealous. It's like Jacob gave Joseph the nicest, I don't know, most expensive headphones that money can buy and the brothers, well, they got nothing. And can you see how this might actually create some tension in their family? Well, what happened next only made matters worse. Let's take a look. One night, Joseph had a dream and when he told his brothers about it, they hated him more than ever. Listen to this dream, he said. We were out in the field tying up bundles of grain. Suddenly my bundle stood up and your bundles all gathered around and bowed low before mine. If this sounds a little weird to you, it's because it is. Basically, Joseph had a dream where he and his brothers were working in a field together. And suddenly, the bundle of grain that Joseph was tying up, it rose up to stand above the others. And the bundle of grains that these brothers were tying did what in response? Well, they bowed down to Joseph's bundle of grain. It was a symbol implying that one day, Joseph's brothers would bow down to him. Now, Here's the thing, if one of our siblings came to us with a crazy dream, we'd probably, I don't know, just roll our eyes and move on. It's just a dream after all, but in this culture, dreams were actually a much bigger deal. 
they were actually believed to be predictions of the future. So when Joseph shared his dream about his brothers actually bowing down to him, they believed it and they believed that it was actually going to happen. And as the passage tells us, hearing that made Joseph's brothers hate him all the more. And what's worse is that in, the, in a few verses after, Joseph went on to share another dream he had, and this time uh, where the stars, moon, and sun bowed down to worship him. As you can probably guess, his brothers got even more irritated after hearing about the second dream. But what do dreams and all this family drama have to do with us? I think what we can learn from this story is this. When we can't see the bigger picture, we should remember the impact we have on our families. Now, scripture doesn't tell us what everyone is Joseph's, in Joseph's family was thinking or feeling, but we can guess a lot based on their actions. It seems like everyone, Joseph, his brothers, and even his dad, they didn't notice how their actions affected each other. You could say they were missing some major self-awareness and they definitely didn't see the bigger picture. All that combined caused a lot of conflict. Think about it. Jacob loved his son Joseph so much that he treated him differently than the rest of his brothers. Jacob didn't see the bigger picture that he was causing a lot of tension and conflict between his sons. And Joseph's brother, well, they weren't aware of the way their strong and harsh response to Joseph impacted him. Even though they were reacting to the hurt caused by their dad's favoritism of Joseph, that didn't mean that how they treated Joseph didn't negatively affect him. Even Joseph struggled in his self-awareness department too. He knew his brothers were jealous of the way that his father loved and favored him. But still, Joseph came to them with not just one, but two dreams about how great he would be one day. And he didn't see the bigger picture of how sharing those things might hurt his brothers even more. Everybody in this story was missing the bigger picture. They weren't paying attention to how they were negatively affecting their other family members. And honestly, I think that's true for a lot of the family tension and stress that we experience. Typically, nobody is trying to be self-centered. We're simply trying to make sure that our needs are getting met. We're trying to make sure things go the way that we want them to go. And we're not trying to hurt anybody else. We're honestly not thinking about anybody else at all. But that's the problem. Because when we only think about ourselves, we miss the bigger picture. We miss the way our actions impact others. Now, Maybe you feel like everyone else in your family isn't paying attention to how their actions impact you. Maybe your mom lied about something. Maybe your dad or your mom left the house because of an argument. Or one of your siblings have hurt you repeatedly and without consequence. And to you, I'd say this, there's more to those stories too. The people who hurt you in your family, they usually do that because somebody hurt them. They're reacting to their own pain. And does that make what they did okay? Absolutely not. And I really encourage you to talk to someone you trust if you're being mistreated or harmed in some way. But it can help us see the bigger picture when it comes to the way that we feel about them. Here's the point. When you can't see the bigger picture, remember the impact you have on your family. So many of us are hyper aware of the way our family affects us, but we are rarely aware of how we affect them. And that's what happened with Joseph's story. And look how that turned out. Not great. Everybody was upset. And we'll see in later weeks, things get worse before they actually get better. So instead of letting this be the story of our own families, we can flip the way we see what's happening we can work on becoming more aware of how our words, actions, and behaviors impact our families. When you can't see the bigger picture, 
remember the impact you have on your family. So what does this actually look like? How do we start seeing the bigger picture when it comes to how our actions impact our families? One, be aware. I think we have to work on developing an accurate view of ourselves. We have to be aware of how our actions impact others. We need to start by asking yourself, how is the way I'm acting affecting my family? How can I put my family first? What do I need to give up or put aside to serve my family? How can I show love to my family? And what can I do to put my family's needs before my own? Listen, paying attention to how our actions affect others is hard. It's not always easy for us to see the way we're impacting other people. If you aren't sure, ask someone close to you for honest help. I don't know, a parent, an older sibling, an auntie or uncle. Just go to someone who's, who knows you and well and will speak the truth in love. And ask them to help you see something in yourself that maybe you can't see on your own. Two, take a step. That's right. Take one step to change that thing in yourself or to be more aware of the way it impacts others. Then choose a different response. Maybe you always speak harshly to your younger sibling. So you need to practice recognizing and correcting that tone. Maybe you leave your clothes or dishes or school stuff out and around the house and your parents have to clean it up. So you need to practice better awareness to pick up after yourself. Or maybe you need to control your temper instead of blowing up at your family when you're tired or frustrated or mad. You know, whatever it is, just pause and think about how you're affecting others. Look at how you're impacting the bigger picture and make a move to change it for the better. Remember, when you can't see the bigger picture, remember the impact you have on your family. And as we wrap up here today, I want you to think about this question and talk about it with your parents or an adult that you look up to. What's one way I might be causing conflict or tension in my family? See you next week.